All right, so let's go ahead and do a quick walkthrough and demo of our project at its current state. And of course, when I mean current state, if you go on GitHub for this code repo, click on our commits, of course, for Trijango 3.2, the most recent commit is 73. So that means that part 74 has not been out yet. So this is what we're gonna be covering or discussing right now. A lot of it is gonna be about the code itself, not so much the visuals that have happened uh, at this point in the series. So future demos will definitely show better visuals, which means I'm preparing you for this. You might be like, oh man, really? This is all we've got so far? Well, the cool thing about this is I have a lot of actual features involved, including creating things. Now we're looking at articles and I already discussed in the intro that we're doing inventory management. So let's actually take a look at that. So if we go into pantry and recipes, I can actually see the current inventory I have for any given item. Um, and so these are recipes and then their corresponding values. Notice it's saying loading. That is actually happening dynamically without writing a single line of JavaScript. And in this, we also can do edit. So this brings me into a form also happening dynamically. And of course, I mean dynamically, the page doesn't actually reload. And then the other part is these ingredients in here. If I wanted to remove some of these ingredients, I can do so. And again, this is happening dynamically. It's really cool. I'll show some of the code about it in just a moment, uh, but we can do this over and over again. And of course I can also dynamically add some ingredients in here as well. And we can save that. And what do you know, dynamically adding ingredients and updating forms. Now, the other part of this, of course, is doing a search. Let's say, for instance, I want to search for taco. Notice that it did type ahead. So if I did chicken and it actually shows me some of these search results in here, I can actually view all of the results there and I can actually review that individual item itself. Now, of course, there are features to this that need to be improved. That's why I'm kind of showing you a snapshot of where we are now as far as the demo is concerned. But anywhere we want to go, we can delete an item. We can also delete individual ingredients. And all of this is through the magic of using Django and a tool called HTMX. Now, before we actually look at the code, I just want to show you we've also already set up our project and deployed it on DigitalOcean app platform. Now, of course, the project itself is even more basic in production than what we see here. Now, the reason for that is because I want to give you a foundation for this production that you can continuously send on your own. And you could, in theory, have a production version of this already at this state in the series. We just haven't actually come back to that production level just yet. Of course, we certainly will. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the code. This hopefully is where things get maybe a little bit more impressive. Now, if you wanted to follow along with me, you can absolutely just jump on to the GitHub repo right here. This, of course, will be linked in the description as well. And so what we see is the code for all of this. Now, I want to bring your attention to these views. Now, if you've never done Django before, this isn't going to matter to you a whole lot. But if you have done Django before and you've never done HTMX before, check this out. This is the one single way to actually delete any given content. And using HTMX, we can make it dynamic and actually render out a template in line. We don't have to worry about JSON parsing data. We don't have to like re-render out other HTML. It's literally a Django template and it's all done dynamically. So, so cool. Um, that is definitely one of my favorite parts of this. Now in the search feature, it's actually very similar. We have a way to do the search within um, Django itself, but then also using HTMX for a little bit more of that dynamic search. Yes, we already saw in this demo that this could be improved, but it is a very simple and easy way to do that. And we also talk about all the templates, templating engine, and how we can render out various content as well as dynamic content or just standard Django content. Now, we spend a lot of time discussing all of these things up until this point, um, including just a basic example, which is the articles here. So the articles is really just our introduction into Django, kind of understanding some of the basics that you would end up using Django for in a lot of different projects. And so we talk about models, we talk about query sets, of course, we talk about URLs, we talk about testing, actually running automated tests to ensure that it's working the way we intended. We talk about utility features that actually generate something called a slug field in a somewhat automated fashion, which includes actually using recursive functions as well, which I think is important. 
We talk about overriding the save method in here and how that works. Also signals, Django signals. So a lot of that is the foundation. And then we build on top of that and go into, you know, the recipes and really just, you know, leverage what we've already learned and then add on top of it and introduce concepts like um, foreign keys where we can actually attach data to other data, including to users. So there's a user management data stuff. Um, of course, we talk about forms because forms is how we ingest or actually get data from a, a user. Um, we also talk about the Django admin quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, some more tests uh, and how URLs are routed and handled. Some utility features like parsing a number string to a float. Um, and then also we have something else in here that I think is really cool is the ability to turn any given ingredient into a universal unit. So whether it's into the metric system or the imperial system, uh, it's pretty cool. It's using a third party package called Pint as well. So yeah, we actually cover quite a few things in this one. And although the maybe the visuals of it don't look great just yet, they certainly will. Um, but the functionality of it is definitely there. And one of the other functions that is kind of hard to explain in code is really the user authentication. Um, it's hard to explain in code without going into too much depth, I should say. So I'm able to actually log in and log out using a lot of the built-in features that Django has, actually has. And I can also register a user, again, using built-in Django features. So that's it for the demo on this one. Yes, I definitely intend to have more going on. And of course, we can also look at the admin itself. If we log in in the right session, we can look at the admin and see all of the data that's coming in there as well. This is just a way to manage this data. Now, I realize I talked incredibly fast in this demo. That's on purpose because we shouldn't spend that much time looking at the demos because it really doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but I will say that just getting an idea of where we are at this current state hopefully gets you excited about either just getting started or jumping around to various parts. Now, if you've been following me for a long time, the HTMX stuff, to me, I'm incredibly excited about that. And even that portion alone is worth checking out in these first versions. So thanks for watching the demo and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.